Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organic Modeling with Wasp tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial I want to show you how to use some of the brand new features of Rhino 7 and specifically the subdiff uh, tools to uh, improve your workflow when you're trying to model organic structures with Wasp and to create much uh, like results much quicker that can also be edited with a much more ease directly when you go back to Rhino. So the reason I'm doing this tutorial is double. One of them is I want to see how these new features can be integrated in Wasp. But the second reason is that uh, I am really happy that uh, the latest service release of Rhino, as the service release 6, has fixed uh, a bug in the mesh intersection code of uh, Rhino, which caused Wasp to be extremely slow. So what I want to show you first of all is I want to show you how to uh, make sure that your Wasp uh, that your Rhino is set up correctly, your Rhino 7 installation is set up correctly in order to be able to run Wasp without uh, having crashes and without having your files to run extremely slow. So to do that, what you want to do is in your Rhino tab, you want to go under L and go to About Rhino Servers. And this is going to open up the About panel of Rhino. And what you want to check is here, you want to make sure that the version here is version 7, of course, if you're in Rhino 7, but you want to make sure that the service release is at least service release 6. Now, the current service release that is available by default uh, from McNeil is, I think, still service release 4, and you can install service release 5. However, I'm going to put a link in the video. Uh, in the video description where you can actually go and download a, a pre-release that is the pre-release uh, of the service release 6 in order to make sure that uh, your WASP components will not run super slow. Once you download, uh, you installed and made sure that uh, your uh, service release of Rhino is the one that would uh, fix the bug that is present in, uh, in working together with WASP. Uh, you might want to go on and open the uh, work file that you can find in the link in the description. Now what you'll find in it is you'll find a simple space filling aggregation composed on two parts, a tetrahedron and an octahedron. And so we just created a very simple aggregation with these two components. And we made sure that these parts cannot connect to each other, but that they can always have to jump from one tetrahedron to an octahedron. And so you'll see that whenever we reset, we'll still end up having this uh, space filling pattern. Just for you to see what happens if I would just allow parts to connect to each other, I would have a much more chaotic um, result. And well, that's maybe something you might want to create, but for now we're going to stick to a more rigid structure. So what we want to do in this tutorial is we want to use a new component that is available in Rhino 7 that is the uh, subdiv multipipe uh, component to create the organic structures that we were creating in the previous tutorial without actually going through the process of building the whole mesh ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a much simpler structure which is going to be simply a line network for each part. And then we are gonna go and use the multipipe component to thicken this line network with a smooth subdiv geometry. So how to do that? The first thing we wanna do is we wanna create this line network and store it as an attribute in the parts. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hide the part geometries here. And I'm going to then come to uh, my own part. So I'm going to start with my tetrahedron. And so I'm going to turn this to wireframe so that we see what we're doing. And so what I want to do is I want to find the centroid of this tetrahedron and then create a set of lines that connect the center of each tetrahedron to the center of each of our four connections that we have there. So we're going to first of all find the center using a volume component. connect our geometry and that's going to return as our centroid there and then we're going to use a line component to create a line that goes from our centroid here to all the centers of our connections and there we go so this is going to be very simply our um, uh, line network for this part so the last step that we want to do is we want to store this line network as an attribute 
and so we're gonna go and find the wasp tab somewhere where did it go here we go and then we're gonna go to elements attributes we're gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it network We are going to connect our curves as a value. And finally, I'm going to create a toggle, set it to true by double clicking on it, and then connect that to this. So what we are saying here is that this attribute is transformable, which means that it's going to be carried around during aggregation together with the part. So we're going to take our attribute and connect it to the attribute input of our part. And what we're then going to do is we're going to take this whole set of components that we just created and using Ctrl C and Ctrl V just copy them move them below and then simply replace the input of the volume component with the geometry of our octahedron and so that's going to return us the centroid of our octahedron and then the B input of the line will be replaced with the points of our connection and so here we go we create these eight lines that go from the center to the connections. We're going to leave the name the same, so it's going to also be called network. And we're going to leave the toggle to true and then connect this to our attribute. If we now go and reset our aggregation, of course, when we uh, turn the preview here, we can see this aggregation. But what we can also do now that we added um, an attribute to this is we can go to elements and get get attribute by name. And we're going to connect our parts out. And so the idea of the attribute we want to call is, as we said, it's going to be called network. And we're going to connect this to here. And if I now go and hide my part geometry, you see that we have a network that represents this pattern of parts and the connection of all the connections to the center of the part. Now that we extracted this line network, uh, in the previous tutorials, we've seen how we had to extract the faces and then create all the lofts and so on. But since we are in minus seven and we have this very powerful tool, which is the multi-pipe component, what we can very quickly do is we can go under the uh, surface tab and under subdiv, we can get a multi-pipe component. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our curves coming out here. We're gonna connect them to the curve input here. And we are gonna also right click and make sure we flatten the input. And you see that what this is gonna do is it's gonna create automatically an organic smoothed pipe structure in between uh, along our lines. So we have a little bit of control with some of the inputs. So we're not going to go through all of them, but we're going to see two of them, which are the node size and the strut size. So by default, the node size is 0 0.5. I'm going to, for example, put a node size of 1.2. And you see that what that's going to do is it's going to thicken our node size. I'm going to also maybe create a custom preview so that we can see it a bit better. So here we go. You see that as we change this slider, the center point becomes thicker. Now what we can also do is we can also control together with the size of the of the node itself, we can also control the size of our struts. So if, for example, I'm going to say that my strut is going to be, by default, it's at 1. If I'm going to put it at 0 0.5, you see that what's going to happen is that my struts will become much smaller. And so we can then explore a variety of different looks by changing this one. So we can, for example, go to a very, let's say, narrow structure, or we could also, for example, go for a much thicker strut, which looks more, a little bit more rigid, 
as well I think it's quite interesting we can highly increase the dimension of our node and create this kind of like more pillow like structures now this is pretty cool I'm gonna go back to let's say a default kind of look and of course what's nice is that we could go back and change our wasp rules here and then reset and that's gonna create this more chaotic structure and still our subdiv will be created and it's gonna be one single object created however you'll notice something that might be a little bit not annoying or let's say if not annoying a little bit not really in control and what we can notice is that uh, our meshes here so our subdiv objects they are open so and uh, since they're open they might not be uh, so easy to work and also the edges they kind of don't look necessarily super clean so the question is how can we uh, close this geometry so one option could be to simply run a cap component as you would do on a BRAP. However, the problem with that is that your object will be converted into a BRAP in order to cap it. And so that's kind of not what we want because we want to be able to, as much as possible, keep the subdev ability to just play around with it and, uh, and be able to edit them without going to a BRAP, which would become much heavier to edit. So what we can do is instead is we're gonna, I'm gonna delete my custom preview here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our subdiv tab and we are gonna first of all instruct the subdiv control polygon. So if you know how a subdiv is work is it the subdiv has, as we connect it here, a control polygon that runs around it and then this smooth subdiv geometry is computed from this uh, control polygon. So this, what's interesting is that this control polygon gets returned to us as a mesh and not as a subdiv. And so what it means is that we can use the mesh techniques that we know to edit them and do what we want to do. So for example, what we can do very easily is we can get a mesh edges component. Which is going to return us all the edges of this mesh. But what's nice about this component is that it returns us in E1 all the edges which have a balanced one, which means that are all the edges that are connected to just one face. So edges that are connected to only one face are all the edges that sit on uh, open. They are the edges that which are, let's say, called naked edges so that they sit along uh, a place where the mesh is open. So what we can do is we can take these edges and join them using join curves. And so you'll see that what this does is it returns us all these square uh, curves that are at the, um, at the open ends. Now that we converted them and we know that they're all squares, uh, because that's how the multipipe is building them, what we can do very quickly is we can convert this to a mesh itself. And so we are going to say simple mesh. And so you see we're going to create these mesh faces that end up closing all the endings of our subdiv object. And what we can then do is we can take the, all the simple meshes and our open control polygon here and we can do join mesh to bring them together. We are going to right click and flatten the input so that we're sure that everything goes in the same tab and then what we also want to do is we want to make sure that our vertices are welded so we're going to get mesh weld vertices so here we go now we have our control polygon that has been capped and so now what's cool is that this control polygon if we take this control polygon that is a mesh and convert it back to a subdiv we're going to get the same exact subdiv, but this subdiv will actually be capped. So what we want to do is we go to the subdiv tab and we're going to say subdiv from mesh. 
and we're going to connect this. And so now you'll see that we recreated our subdiv object, but our subdiv object is now capped. So we can hide the one we had before. And now here we go, you see we have our nice, smooth, close subdiv object. So we can maybe do a custom preview. To view it with this watch. And maybe we can do the same. I'm going to give the custom preview line view that you can find in the human plugin to visualize the edges. And so we're going to say subdiv edges here. It's going to give you everything, also the edges of the control polygon. But in the edges here, we actually can get the one that are hidden. We can give it again a color. And so you see that what we did is we very quickly are now able to convert a WASP a very rough aggregation, so if I go on and reset, to a clean, smoother, smooth um, subdiv object. And so, of course, you can work with it and you can play around with it. But one of the really interesting things about working with subdivs is that compared to other geometries like meshes or BREPs, uh, subdivs are much easier to work with and much easier to edit. So, for example, if you would now go on your subdiv object, right click and bake it, and we will now close this. I'm going to switch to shaded mode. What you can now do is you can take this object and start working with it. For example, you might want to take this geometry and for example, change it or extend it in a way. So I might want to change this a little bit. Or if, for example, you would want to have another pin extruding from the component, you could go and keep in control shift pressed, select a group of faces, and then you could go to subdiv, edit tools, and for example, subdivide, and that's going to split it up. And then I could go and select just the interfaces. And for example, move them. Not exactly what I expected, but yeah, you see. So there are some tutorials out there on how to work with subdiv, and I'm sure that there's going to be more coming for it, but the idea here is that you can, once you created this WASP aggregation, you could bring it back to Rhino and then start editing, preserving the great capabilities that Subdiv has for editing, while at the same time having in the back the power of WASP for generating very complex structures. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and also I hope that now you will all be able to uh, work with WASP on Rhino 7 freely. If you encounter any bugs or any issues with it, please join the Discord uh, community that you will find the link in the description as well and let me know if there's problems. And for now, just enjoy Wasp and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.